Good morning, everybody. Carmen here with Quality Sewing. And for this week's How Do I, we are going to talk about the feet that probably came with your sewing machine. So most of the machines today come with quite an array of different feet. And I don't know about you, but a lot of people aren't really sure what they all do. So I thought today we would sort of go over what each of them is for and how you use them. So I'm sitting in front of the Baby Lock Presto, and you can see here, it has a really nice foot tray and it comes with all of these different feet. So the standard foot is on, which is the J foot, and that's what normally would go here. And there's a buttonhole foot and a blind hem foot, a zipper foot, a sewing on the button foot, a decorative stitch foot, and a, uh, an overcast foot. I almost called it a rolled hem foot. I always do that with these two for some reason, but these two in particular, I think are the feet that people aren't quite sure what to do with. So we're gonna start with this guy. This is our blind hem foot. And what's cool about a lot of feet is they also have a letter on them. So this is saying it is an R foot. So I already went in and selected stitch 31. And this is the blind hem stitch. And what that blind hem stitch is going to do is it's going to do a straight line and then jump over and bite the fabric and a straight line and then jump over and bite the fabric. So a blind hem is that hem when you have a pair of dress pants that is hemmed, but you can't see the line on the outside, they have used a blind hem because they're just tacking it, right? So what the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fold my fabric sort of the way that you, um, to make it look like it's, it's pants, right? So if these are my pants, this would be the inside of them. And when I'm done stitching, this would flip up and this would be the bottom of the pant and there's gonna be just a little, little bite marks out there. So the thing that this machine has done for me here is it actually also when I selected the stitch over here, it is showing me to use the R foot. And so it tells me that's the foot that's gonna help, help, help me out. And many machines are going to tr show, tell you that, tell you which foot might work well. So I'm gonna have my folded fabric here. I'm gonna line my flange up against the fold and then I'm gonna hit the go button. And it's gonna do straight line and then jump over, straight line and then jump over. And I'm just gonna keep it up against that flange and then I will stop and I'm gonna use my thread cutters, which is so handy. I love that feature of this machine. And here now, when I flip this over, you can see that on this side, it has done the straight stitch and then the jump over, straight stitch and jump over. And then when we flip over here, you can see it does just a little line. Now this might be a bit bigger of a bite than I would have wanted. So if I wanted to adjust that, I could just adjust my stitch width and make the, the bite a little bit smaller. There are some blind stitch feet that actually have a little wheel on them. So you can adjust where this flange is because that is another way to adjust how big that bite is. So you always wanna do a test and just do just a little, just a little bite so you barely see it. The other thing that I have found is like on different material, like if this was a wool material or if it was a like the dress pant material, it is going to be, uh, you're not gonna be able to see that stitch as much. So every uh, type of material is a little bit different for how easily that blind stitch hides in it. So that's how you use the blind stitch foot. Next, we are going to talk about the buttonhole foot. So here, this is the brother buttonhole foot. Um, baby lock, or baby lock and brother, I guess I am sitting in front of a baby lock. But what's cool about this, this, this foot, and a lot of buttonhole feet are like this, you put the size of button right here, and then it's gonna make a buttonhole to match that size. So if it was a bigger button or a smaller button, it's gonna do all the work for you. So we're gonna snap this guy on, and whenever you have this particular type of foot, so I need to get my thread out of my way so I don't accidentally snap it in. Um, when you have this type of buttonhole foot, you also are gonna pull down your little lever there, okay? It's a two-step process. And then I'm gonna go pick a buttonhole, so maybe I will do 58 here. And then I'm just gonna grab some fabric make myself a little sandwich. Now, when I'm doing buttonholes on light fabric, I would normally uh, use some stabilizer or something, but I'm just gonna put some extra layers here so we get a nice buttonhole. And I'm just gonna hit start and it's gonna go all the way back and create a line and then it's gonna come forward and it's gonna go forwards and backwards there. I'm gonna hold that tail out of the way. And then it's going to go all the way down and make the line. And then all will come all the way back up here. 
and then go do go down and do the same exact line in the same direction and then lock it and tie it off and then i'm just gonna hit my thread cutters pull this up and you can see here this is a perfect little buttonhole i'm gonna grab that button so we can see that this button would fit in and then of course if we make buttons you would then just use a little you could use a seam ripper they have buttonhole cutters that you would cut this open to create that opening for your button to go through so this is the buttonhole foot pretty slick i love how it measures it for you there are some buttonhole feet out there uh, depending on your machine if it's not quite this automatic where it is like a four-step process you are going to do the stitch first that goes sideways and then you'll do the stitch that goes backwards and does one side and then a stitch that does the other back and then a stitch that does the front so it's considered a four-step buttonhole process and some buttonholes are like that there are also a couple of other really automatic buttonhole systems out there but most um, most machines are going to come with a buttonhole foot and they're all pretty easy to use which is great so we um we haven't talked about the J foot. This is the standard foot that comes with the machine. And every, every machine's gonna come with a standard sewing foot. You're probably gonna use this one a lot. It's good for straight stitches. It's good for zigzags. It's good for a lot of different stitches. Um, and, uh, and oftentimes this may be the foot that you've mostly used, but I'd recommend playing with all your other feet after you watch this video because it's helpful to know what they do because some of them are gonna make some of the things you've been doing even easier if you're using the right foot. Okay, so the next foot we're gonna talk about is the zipper foot. So this is the zipper foot. And the tricky thing about a zipper foot is you can actually, in general, attach them on either side, depending on which side of the zipper you're gonna sew on. So you can attach it over here on this side. So I do have something so you can sort of get an idea that has a zipper here that's already been sewn. But if you were sewing one side of the zipper, right, you can run it down this side, or you can flip this guy over here and then you could run it down the other side of the zipper and you have room for the zipper part to, um, to not get in the way and bunch up your fabric or anything. So that is the trick on zipper feet is one, make sure you have your zipper foot forward. A lot of there are some zipper feet out there that people tend to put on backwards, like even like this. This is not how the zipper foot is designed to get put on. The zipper foot goes on like this and then you attach it to this side or this side depending on which side of your zipper you are attaching so pretty slick oh stuck on here okay next oh if i put it in the right spot and each of these little compartments is marked with a letter so it makes it really easy the next one here is the sewing on the button foot okay so what this guy is for is for exactly what it sounds like it's for sewing on buttons and what you do here is you pick, like this guy has stitch 68. So I'm gonna pick stitch 68. And then you set your button on here. Let's just get my fabric in here too. You put your button in here. And actually, let me just pop this guy back off. You can see here that this guy has a little, um, it's like a little spacer. So this is great when you have a button that, um, that you want it to move more. You know, sometimes you want a button to be sort of tight, really to the fabric, but there's other times where like, because of the weight of the fabric, you need the button to move a bit more. And that is what this little spacer guy is for. And then all we're gonna do is see, we just put our button right in here. It's a lot easier when it's not on the machine and you can put the spacer there in there if you want. And you just make sure that the holes are lined up there with the red marks. You snap this guy on. And then, um, oh, I hit the wrong button. And my foot, oh, this is, look guys here, my machine's so smart. I still have the buttonhole thing down for the buttonhole. So it's like, you can't do anything, you're on the wrong thing. Now it will let me do what I need to do. And it's just gonna go forward, backwards, forward, backwards. And it's gonna tie that um tie that button down and then you would just move it to the other side so pretty slick pretty easy and it has perfectly just tied your button uh your buttonhole your button right on here and it stays a lot better because it is locked on both sides sometimes if i have a really big button and it doesn't work 
with the buttonhole foot, I will just hold the button, but still use the um, that stitch because I am really bad at hand sewing, I'm not gonna lie, and I use my machine for everything. So that's the sewing on the button foot. And then we only have two more here. We have the overcast foot and we have the end foot, which is a decorative stitch foot. So the decorative stitch foot, how you can tell it's different than the standard sewing foot is really this uh, open space on the back. And what it's allowing for is when you're doing any of these really pretty decorative stitches that have a lot of stitch weight, that way they don't, um, it doesn't, like the stitch doesn't like make your fabric bunch. So anytime you're doing a satin stitch or any of those decorative stitches that have weight, you're gonna wanna use the decorative stitch foot because there's room on that foot for all of that thread from the stitch itself to feed nicely under your machine. And finally, we're gonna show you here the overcast foot. So the overcast foot also has a little flange guy right here. And the way the overcast foot works is it's great if you want to do some sort of like mock surging. So if we grab two pieces of fabric like this and go here like this and then I'm just gonna go grab oh I don't know maybe I'll grab 15 and then I'm just gonna start sewing and it's I'm just gonna keep it lined up that bar lined up at the edge of my fabric. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but the, the, the thread is actually going over that metal bar of the foot. And it's because we're actually overcasting on the edge of this fabric. And you can do this with a lot of stretch stitches. Which is, this, is, this stitch, there's a lot of stitching there, so it takes a long time. But you can see here how it's gone right over the edge, right? It's actually finishing that fabric off. And so it works really well when you have stretchy material and you want that stretchy stitch. And you can use a lot of these different stitches. Like I just used 15. You can use some of these different overcasting stitches in here. Like 37 might have worked even better. Um, I use 15, but you can use like 37 could be a good one. Um, and then it's going to overcast over the edge sort of like a serger. A serger is going to be much faster, of course, because it's going to cut your uh, fabric at the same time as it overcasts. So I hope that was helpful. Those are all of the different feet that come standard with most machines. If you have any questions, just comment here and we'll get back to you. And join us next time at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays for the next How Do I.